Lou, you actually shared this with me. I think it's worth covering right here. A stunning yeah. amount of attraction. Oh, yeah. How do you like down. that? <laughs> a couple days ago, October 20th, this by JP on allears.net. It was a rough day in Disney World 7. Magic Kingdom rides were closed throughout the day in Magic Kingdom. And a whole slew of others all, the, all over the resort. You can actually see um, this kind of breakdown here. Uh, of of what the wait times were reported for the you know the the, the specific hour. So you have eight a.m. right here. Uh, obviously, you're not going to get huge waits at eight a.m. Uh, but uh, if we if we just you see right here, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train temporarily closed. This is what an hour into the opening of that park for that day. If we copy that Control F, right, you can see one of twenty three matches here. <laughs> So 23 uh, separate instances of rides being reported down. That's for the entire resort. And yes, uh, there were seven separate attractions that were down throughout the day. Yeah, at what point Magic does temporarily Kingdom. come down to, nope, not opening today? Well, it's interesting, Lou, that you say that because I was noticing here that that uh, Pirates of the Caribbean actually uh, starts being closed at 4 o'clock, temporarily closed, right? And that just keeps going on see uh temporarily closed right here the five o'clock hour six o'clock hour still closed seven o'clock hour still closed eight eight o'clock hour still closed and you know, that's until closing right there so um the, i think there is something to be said about that uh we have noticed here on that park place and i know other outlets are reporting this as well that the downtime uh has increased precipitously uh at the Walt Disney World Resort and even at Disneyland Resort, Marty, I, maybe you can speak to this. Have you noticed more downtime at Disneyland post pandemic well, than you did pre? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I mean, we've been just dealing with like massive closures, which is a whole different subject. You know, like yeah, we just got we just got done with like one of the. I've been a, a AP for twenty or for thirty years, and um, this was like the biggest stretch that I saw like with, with so many rides that were just like being refurbished or you know, under construction and stuff like that. But maintenance wise coming out of, uh, out of the pandemic, these rides are going down more frequently than they did before. Um, you know, I'm sure we'll get into it later, uh, with Tiana, you know, oh, they, don't help, they, they, they don't help themselves because, <laughs> you know, they got other rides now that work fine and don't work anymore. Or, um, but yeah, uh, there's something to be said, I guess. Like, I mean, I know, like, for instance, the trams. The reason why we didn't have trams at Disneyland when they reopened is because rats ate out the uh, the, the, the wires in the engines and stuff because they just <laughs> weren't used. And it took, yeah, Lou, and it took a while for them to fix them. So we had to walk a mile, you know, in you know through the tram route to get to the park and don't forget marty during the time that you still had to walk the uh, what is it one and a half miles to yeah. get from the esplanade mm -hmm. to making french parking structure without the trams they decided to increase the parking fee by five dollars just to kind yeah. of show five bucks in the alone. hey I'm, oh, yeah the worst like as bad a slap in the face as that was and yeah that was they had signs as you were walking down the tram, the tram route that said, Hey, you're almost there. Like they oh, tried to be boy. cute. Like with the old, um, like with the rusties or the, uh, the Burma shave signs on route 66 that said stuff. And they were like, just, and then you walk a little for a little bit and you walk a little bit more oh, further, God. <laughs> you know, it was for bad. Those who don't know Burma shave was a brand of shaving cream and they were famous for these four part, and then a punchline sales pitch signs yeah. along the freeway. They said things like, uh, I actually read a whole article about this once and it stuck with me. So that's why I know these things. Mm -hmm. But uh, they had, he played a sax, had no B.O., but his whiskers scratched. So she let him go. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I, and, oh, and then they had one. They said, um, free, free, a trip to Mars for 900 empty jars. And then they got yeah. word that some woman actually had saved up 750 and was going to ask him for the trip to Mars. Mm. So they had a second sign that went out that said, if a trip to Mars you'd earn, remember, friend, there's no return. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, when you're walking that whole walk after walking 20,000 steps in the parks, uh, the cutesy doesn't really uh, <laughs> doesn't yeah. really go very far. Well, you go know ahead, what? My say. first my first experience of cutesy. Uh, I was working on a show for a guy, and he had the first Macs as his office computers when everybody else was PC. And I remember going in there, and as you might remember, a standard PC green screen or amber screen, whatever, the machine only had to light up the pixels of the letters themselves, not the background. And the original Mac, of course, was this gray screen with black letters, which meant they were lighting up every pixel on that entire screen to include the background, which meant they were slow. Oh, my God, were the original ones slow by comparison. And how they made you wait was they put that little uh, hourglass figure in there, tumbling away, tumbling, tumbling, tumbling. And I'm sitting there going, they think this is cute, huh? I mean, <laughs> they think this is really charming and cute. <laughs> and I'm sitting there waiting for something that's perfectly instant on my other machine. Uh, don't get cute, people. It doesn't work. Marvin, have you noticed um, an uptick in downtime? Oh, absolutely. Uh, they, the, the, they have not been maintaining the rides the way they used to. And it's not even just in downtime. It's been fading and shipping paint. It's been garbage overflowing in the queue lines. It's just a lack of maintenance around everywhere. And, uh, you, you know, I, I, I showed you guys a picture last week of an overflowing garbage can at 9 a.m. Uh, at Epcot when I went a couple weeks ago. And when I was leaving, right. that same garbage can like at 2 p.m. was still overflowing. You know what the crazy thing is, Marvin, is is <laughs> Disney seems to pride themselves on those garbage cans being our um dining tables at food events. Oh I know. <laughs> and now they're I overflowing know. when you yep. bring your 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 uh your item from you know our food and wine or something. Like they you like, would I mean you would never in a million years see that at this point you know, you 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 just don't care that much about Walt's initial vision. So you might as well just start selling chewing gum and newspapers in the parks again. Mm -hmm. well, look at you, Vash. You still have I it. I don't understand why they're why they're trying to make a trash mountain of all this garbage. I mean, they already have that with Tian's Bayou Adventure. So, oh man. Well, and uh... wait, they'll have a food and broccoli festival, and it'll look like Tiana when he. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no I don't know cheese, what. The, I, by the way, and I don't know. What, I don't know what they do to separate the recycling and the garbage. But we were there one time, the and I saw thing. them. Yeah, I saw them dump the garbage and the recycling into the same bin one time. Like, oh, when they were collecting it. of course. And I was like, okay, Captain so Planet what's would the like point? to know your location. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was. I remember many, many years ago, uh, when they first started building the. They had the MGM in uh, uh, Reno and Lake Tahoe. And when you flew into the airport in uh, Reno and then drove to Lake Tahoe before you went, a lot of times you couldn't go to the airport in Lake Tahoe because it was located in a box canyon. And if the wind was blowing too hard, they couldn't stop before the end of the runway and they'd run into the wall. So they canceled flights. But when you got off in the new, improved, still building Reno Airport, you walked down plywood corridor after plywood corridor after plywood corridor to get to baggage claim. Baggage claim was four bays separated only by a thin wall with one continuous conveyor belt through all four. And each of the four bays had four lights, one for each of the four airlines that went in there. It was Hughes Air West and Western and United and somebody else. I forget. PSA. They didn't sort the baggage. They sorted the customers. It was the same belt going to all four, but they put the PSA people on this one. And so can you imagine? Mm. Um, mm. Ah, so, you know, that's the old don't raise the bridge, lower the river. Uh, philosophy. <laughs> yes. So. <Yeah. laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Well, uh, is, as dumb as all this stuff is, uh, it's all been done. And what made Disney special was that they didn't do it for so long. And now they oh. are because it's like, hey, we're not that special. What the hell? That's all people expect, right? Well, well thing, one the, place. The stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, I was go just going to say the, uh, the 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 stuff that they're adopting that they didn't do for so long. They're doing worse than the people that have done it. 
Like they, they that's the problem. It's like the whole multi pass and everything that they put in, all these things, they're doing it worse than the people like you know, that we were like, ah, you know, Magic Mountain is what Magic Mountain is. They do Magic Mountain things. Um, Universal, they're sitting there. All right, you know, I mean, you, they're skipped a line, but they outprice a lot of people. Knott's was, you know, started doing it after Disney. But Disney's still the only one that, you know, they're do when they adopted a lot of these upcharges and barriers that you had to go around and hurdles you had to jump over, they're doing it worse. Yeah, it's one thing to say a Disney park is so clean that you could eat off the floor. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to say the Disney trash cans are so clean that when they're overflowing with garbage, you could still eat off the top of them. Yeah. Would you want to? Would you <sighs> want to? Oh, it's 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 so tragic. That was a highlight from our live stream on that Park Place podcast. It's online, where the full stream can be found at the link in the description. But what about you? What were your thoughts on this particular story? Please let us know in the comments below. Like this video if you did like this video. Share us out as it helps us out tremendously against the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much for watching. T3, B.O. Please comment, like, and share this video. And don't forget to subscribe to that Park Place podcasts online. Your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro, The Pro Show, and That Park Place for all the news that should be fun.